Hello and welcome to our worship today on Palm Sunday. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a laugh this morning. Now, I can't produce a live donkey, but I thought that I could do this. So just hold on a minute. This is the nearest that I can get to a donkey. Helen in a donkey hat. At least it keeps my ears warm. I've also brought along my palm cross. Normally we would give everyone a palm cross. Maybe you can make your own or maybe you can find your palm cross that you maybe have kept from last year. I don't know what's wrong with the technology today, but the light seems to be going in and out. Sorry about that. Anyway, welcome to our worship today. And we're going to just go back to maybe the serious moment of it in a moment when Dean and Marion bring you our Lenten liturgy. This week we have a bowl of clean water. To this we're going to add some salt. The water has now been changed from something we could drink into something we can use for cleansing. For example, we can bathe a wound we also have our plant pot awaiting evidence of new life. In our prayers, we're going to be using a stone. And also, we're going to use some perfumed oil. Now we come to our prayer. If you have brought a pebble or a small stone with you, just place it in your hands now. You can feel it. It's hard. Maybe a little bit heavy. I'm going to invite you now to put it down. To place it either on your chair or on a table. And straight away, you, your hands feel different. You have taken away the weight that was there. As we come to our prayers today, I want you to reflect on that. Because when we come to pray, we should leave the things that weigh us down at the feet of Jesus. He will carry the weight for us. He will take away the hardness and help us to see through the difficulties. Lord, there are times of utter emptiness. When we wonder, where are we going? Where are you? Help us to continue to proclaim the truth of your love. A love that when we encounter the reality of death in our lives, we feel safe. Helps us to cope with the pain of separation and the grief of endings. Help us to trust and not be afraid. May we walk in true solidarity 
with those who suffer. May we have the courage and the strength to listen to deep pain without fear or judgment and without turning away. Like you, Lord, may we cry out from the depths of our being and pour out the reality of our hearts before you, knowing that you are with us. Help us to trust and not be afraid. When the journey seems too long and we waver in resolve, when our vision is dimmed because of the stones that block our path, when we begin to lose hope because worries bind us, and when we come towards the end of the journey, bless us with faith to see that you are there to welcome us. Help us to trust and not be afraid. Amen. Now I invite you, if you wish, to take the perfumed oil and to anoint your hand or your face. And as you do this, to remember the blessing that God gives us and the promise of the resurrection. May God bless you. Amen. The Messiah is come, riding on a donkey. Hosanna to God. Hosanna in the highest. Come and rejoice, our King is here. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Sing and praise, give glory to God. Hosanna to God, Hosanna in the highest. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. He's We
to now lead you in some prayers of thanksgiving so let us pray thank you loving god that you know us and understand us and all human beings no matter how far we stray as we walk again through this holy week may we listen to our own hearts Notice which parts of the story is especially touching our hearts this year. And we thank you that your word is living, not frozen in history, but alive. Ancient stories revealing present truths. Lord, you know what we need to hear during this Holy Week. Whether we need to hear the challenging aspects or reassurance and support. You work in the layers within us. Nowadays we call them the unconscious. We trust you to work in us so that this Easter we might find more of your life welling up from within our own being. Some lovely words there. I like that. Jesus' life welling up in us from inside of us. But also that recognition that we're all in different places. We're all feeling different emotions. And God accepts us wherever we are. Let's hear our readings for today. We're going to have two different versions of the Palm Sunday story. Reading John 12, 11-19 Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. The next day the crowd, the great crowd, that come for the festival, heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went on to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey coat. At first the disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that those things had been done to him. Now the king, the, the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed these signs, went on to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a, a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. 
If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the, na- is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Our message for today. The thing that struck me this week, the thing that was most highlighted for me, are the words of the final blessing that you're going to hear at the end of this worship. I'm going to read them because I'm going to use them as part of what I say today. And they're this. Go into Holy Week, walking in the footsteps of Christ, may facing hard things allow the transformation of your being, that Easter light might be born in you. The beginning of Holy Week always causes a tension within me. We hear of that joyful, triumphant entry into Jerusalem, preceded by the tears as he looks over Jerusalem before he enters. We're kind of encouraged to be joyful, yet we know what's coming and we don't always feel joyful, do we? We're called to join in that Passover celebration with the cheering crowds, waving our palm crosses or palm leaves and laying down our cloaks. I wonder. Jesus knew, maybe, what was coming. We know through the historical records what was coming. And that's the tension in me. How do you actually celebrate when you know? I know we know the resurrection at the end of it all, but just that poignancy of all the suffering during Holy Week. In our churches, we're perhaps cheering that there's going to be an opening up. Potential of relaxing restrictions. Potential for family gatherings. Well, outdoors at least. Don't get excited. But we don't actually know what is to come in our lives or in the relaxing of these restrictions. There's still a cloud, isn't there? What if the numbers go up? What about the third wave? What about the threat from Europe? The vaccine availability slowing. Jesus experienced that cloud, I think, when he looked over that panorama as he approached the city. So we kind of step into Holy Week in a cloud of unknowing. There's a significance to that, I'll explain later. We don't know what is going to lie ahead of us. And yet we're called to go into Holy Week, walking in the footsteps of Christ. Simple instruction. Simple, but not so. However, I do think that we need reminding that we must walk in the footsteps of Christ. 
some of us may be facing pretty hard decisions this week. All those characteristic of the decisions made during that first Holy Week. What to leave behind? What sacrifices to make? What pain must be faced? Who must we or might we betray for the greater good? Who do we need to serve as the servant king? Which crowd do we follow? The crowd that wanted a triumphant king or the crowd that wanted a humble king? What must we get down on our knees for the garden of Gethsemane? Who do we need to stand before? Pilate, the high priest. Who must we stand by? Mary, the women. Joseph of Arimathea. What do we need to wash our hands of? Pilate? Some of these are very stark questions, but you can see they're related to the Holy Week narrative. Again, it's down to choice. How easy it is to make the wrong choice. Not knowing the outcome is hard. As I said, I think we can perhaps assume that maybe Jesus knew the outcome before he began the journey, or if he didn't know it fully, he probably suspected. But in his humanness, did he? All we do know is that in fact, for most of that journey, he trusted in God, his father. There's a book called The Cloud of Unknowing, written by an unknown mystic in the latter half of the 14th century. It's a guide to contemplative prayer that is uplifting. It's a tool. It's a tool for those who desire in their hearts to be at one with God, united with God in unconditional love. The message of Easter, surely purpose of Jesus dying on a cross was all about love. Jesus went on that journey with all those uncertainties, just as we're beginning this week with the uncertainties. We know what happened in the Jesus story, so I figure we need to use this as a blueprint for us knowing that whatever that uncertainty is, there will be resurrection and new life. The words of the blessing. May facing hard things allow transformation of your being. That Easter light might be born in you. Yeah, in you. Allow transformation to take place in you this week. Allow the Easter light to be born in you this week through all the experiences of the journey. I'm sure that we are praying for that Easter light in our world and our communities and our lives. Are we ready? When Jesus stepped down off that donkey, he'd only a few days left to show the world what love really looked like. Are you ready to do that? I'm going to finish with a love letter from God to you. You need to fill in your name in the space. Dear Helen, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he didn't come to fight the Romans. Jesus came to fight hatred, sadness and unkindness 
and the only way to fight those enemies is with love. Jesus came to teach people how to love, to heal us from everything that hurts and to fill your life with joy and hope, forgiveness and peace. And the more you get to know Jesus, the more you walk in his footsteps, the more you follow his ways, the more you can discover that this can be your life. Love God. of Jesus fill this place May the fragrance of Jesus fill this place Rising from the
loveliness, changing all my ugliness. Oh Lord, I receive Your Go into Holy Week, walking in the footsteps of Christ. May facing hard things allow transformation of your being, that Easter light might be born in you. <laughs> 